As promised, I will include Teradyne videos in my multimeter reviews and I will also make Teradyne videos of the multimeters that I've already reviewed, starting from this Fluke 101. Like always when taking devices apart, first thing is to remove the batteries. Then there are four screws, one in each corner. They go straight to the plastic, there isn't metal inserts, but that is quite okay because there aren't any fuses or any other user replaceable things inside the multimeter, so there isn't reason to open it very often. While separating two half of the case, we can definitely notice the blast protection, there is a groove on the yellow part of the body and there is about the 8mm lip on the grey part of the case. There isn't really anything on the front side of the PCB, all the magic is happening on the back side. To remove the PCB, there are three screws around the display, they are holding the display and PCB on the case, and the display is also held on the PCB by few plastic clips. Quick look at the input section of the PCB reveals that there are everything there should be. There's the power resistor in the input, there's the BTC and couple moves. There are also a few isolation slots and actually part of the case comes through those slots acting as extra insulation. That's great. The general boot quality, for example soldering quality, seems excellent. There aren't any potentiometers because this is calibrated digitally and the calibration is done through this board that was visible behind the battery cover. Making any adjustments can be hard if one doesn't know which IC this multimeter is using. There doesn't seem to be any hidden buttons or anything other hackable on the front side of the PCB. There are the two, two buttons and the input checks are screwed in place. I liked the performance of this multimeter as well as the external build quality, and the internals were as good as one could hope for.